Okay, this is something I've been wanting to demonstrate for a while. Soldering surface mount components. Not as hard as you might think. We don't need to use solder paste, we're going to use a soldering iron. And I'm going to use lead free solder, which is the most difficult to work with so lead free doesn't flow as well it's drier it's more difficult to work with anyone that has used lead free solder will know what I'm talking about but we're going to go with the worst case scenario so lead free solder uh, we've got a S SOP package here we've got a 1206 capacitor an 0603 ferrite bead and a 805 resistor so how do we solder those by hand with a normal old soldering iron well, the one thing you need is a pair of tweezers these are non-magnetic tweezers and one of these things this is a pair of magnifiers two times magnifiers they're cheap and easy to use and they fit on your head so that means rather than using a fixed magnifying glass we can just put these on and get two times magnification solder will be we we'll use this lead free 0.7 flux core it's the way of the future okay we'll do the easiest one first which is the 1206 brush the soldering iron on our brass brush to clean it come in from the right hand side because I'm holding the soldering iron with my left hand flow the solder onto the pad and the component and now that's held in position and we'll do the other side soldering iron on the pad flow some solder let it flow onto the component done and now we'll do a smaller one we'll do an 805 resistor we'll do R1 R1 up there a little bit of solder on the pad grab our resistor Tuck it in place, flow the other pad, just wipe the soldering iron regularly. Awkward because of the camera. There, that side's in place, and I'll just make sure that this is soldered right there. Done. So now we're going to go for our smallest component, the little. 0603 ferrite bead first pad on the left hand side because I'm holding the soldering iron with my left hand we can move our board around because we're wearing goggles first pad done second pad done let's see how close we can get ferrite okay now for the biggest challenge how do we hand solder one of these it's just a soldering iron an S-SOP well it goes around this way 
first we're just going to tack in place one leg very very carefully while holding the component in place we're going to go for a corner so wipe the soldering iron tip load it up with a little bit of fresh solder use our finger and tack that quarter in place done now it's just tacked in place let's go and do the opposite corner wipe the soldering iron load it up with a little bit of solder tack it in place done so we have that chip loosely held in place fairly well lined up now we need the secret ingredient flux flux pen now we need to shake the pen if we haven't used it for a while flux pen don't be stingy with the quantity of flux push it push in the nib and let it flow you can see it's wet on the chip and there's a good quantity of flux on the pins now this will evaporate with the soldering iron and make some nasty noxious vapors so don't breathe them in and if we've got enough flux there we should see when we load up the soldering iron with a little bit of solder that was too much we can roll in a small quantity of solder into the pin and you'll see it just flow in and get sucked in as the sole as the flux evaporates so we can go and do every single the solder tent is, is attracted to the metal thanks to the flux so very carefully we can do every single pin just by using a little blob of solder see we've got a bridge there we don't worry about that just go to the next one what terrible bridge how are we going to get rid of that don't worry about it going to go through all of the pins I'm purposely doing it badly just to demonstrate usually I do it perfectly first time flux is the key so there we have all the pins done but we have some bridges get rid of those bridges we use our flux again liberal quantity of flux over, to over the top of those sometimes flux itself is enough but we're going to use solder wick solder wick is an absorbent copper wick with some chemicals impregnated in it that absorbs solder and watch how this stuff works bit of solder on the tip so it contacts the wick well push the wick in close to your pins and suck it up one two three look at that we've got one bridge there between those two pins we won't be hasty we'll put some more flux on as soon as that gets wet that bridge is going to break which is what we want but we're going to use this 
solar wick again. One, two, three. It's stuck. Well, make sure we get good thermal contact. Put a bit more solder on the soldering iron. Look at that. We managed through all that mess and heartache to solder one side of our chip. So if we can do one side, we should be able to do the other side. Now I don't think this camera is focusing on it, but I can see with these magnifying glasses that all those pins are soldered very well. So let's do the other side. Flux pen. Flux pen is like a flux capacitor except it can't travel back in time. A little bit of solder to wet our soldering iron. That was too much. Just a little ball of solder on the soldering iron. Now it's not many, it's not getting to the tip. We want it right on the tip. Three, four, five, and you can see the solder flow in as the flux evaporates and cleans the metal. Perfect. We did that whole side with only only a second attempt. We did that whole side perfectly without any bridges. So that's an SOP. We're done. With a soldering iron, flux pen. A bit of this stuff, solder wick for emergencies. tweezers and these magnifying goggles too easy one thing to note at the end remember to clean away the flux with isopropyl alcohol um, so you can spray this on and use a soft toothbrush to brush away wherever you've made a solder joint.